Hello and welcome. Today we are with a licensed professional counselor, a play therapist, and a parenting coach. It happens to be that she is my cousin, Maria Arias. We both share the passion of education. We have been involved in education for between the two of us over 40 years now. And we are looking at education and how it actually helps bridge families together, especially through these moments of online learning. We have noticed that there's a lot of anxiety on par by parents, which is stressful to the child. And we thought that we could bring in the school perspective and the psychological perspective together to help us out. So Molly, we call her Molly. How are you today? And let's take this away. Hi, yes, good. I'm really well, thank you. I'm so happy to be talking to you about this today because we do share this passion for helping families. And I think you're right about anxiety being a big issue right now as we're all transitioning onto online learning. So I have a few things I'd love to share with you. Please do, because a lot of the things that you do in therapy, teachers are using them in the classroom, which is actually, you know, sometimes we think, oh, you know, this would only work for a certain type of child. Not realizing that some of these things are actually important for all. And as we were talking on the phone yesterday and, you know, trying to decide what we were going to talk about today, which is one of the most important things that we were talking about was regulating the child's environment. Yes. So do you want to talk about that first? Yeah, absolutely. So it's so, when families come to me, and this is something that I love about your book, Donna, that you really um, focus on, you know, the role that the parent can have in the important role in like, discipline and learning. And so um, regulating the environment includes regulating ourselves, regulating things around us and putting things in on a schedule. Mm -hmm. So I think schedules are super important and routines and pictures to address anxiety. I was wondering, I, I know that you have given many conferences in the past, um, addressed many parents, especially when you were living in Texas. Um, could you share some of those schedules with the parents and the why you use them? Because they're very similar to the reasons why I would use them in the classroom as well. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So um, we wanna reduce anxiety overall for this new experience of online learning. So the best thing that we can do, even for kids up to 12 years old, is have a visual routine for them. Um, and we can talk about the way anxiety looks for them, but let me show you just the visual routine. So this is one that I offer as a suggestion. So here you can say, you, you can see you have wake up, go potty, get dressed, three steps at a time. And the next three steps could be open your computer, you know, online learning and take a break, a movement break and a snack, something like that. Um, that can help reduce anxiety because anxiety, what it looks like in children is um, aggression and hyperactivity. So that's what anxiety looks like in children. So we wanna um, provide them with this regulated, more regulated environment so that their nervous system can start to settle and then they can start to focus on learning. So you're talking about ADHD and anxiety and both you and I are huge fans of Gabor Mate. Dr. Gabor Mate in Canada, I think he won an award about two years ago where his work on anxiety and child stress was recognized as something vital and in the children's development and how it can actually hamper them. Why is it that, I know that you know a lot about how it actually affects the stem brain. Why is it that this anxiety develops and how is it that from your perspective as a you know, child therapist, play therapist and parent coach, how does this help, how can we help reduce it so that parents leave here with a tool? Yep, yep. So um, one of the things is understanding that we can use discipline to teach, you know, and, and, and teach children now that they have to be learning at home. Mm -hmm. So one of the ways so that we can remove some of the unknown and give children more information through these routines and pictures, and you want to have 
like a calendar. You want to have a nice big monthly calendar on the fridge. This one has September and the, the first day of school in my town. So you want to have anything that's important on there. We want to understand that the brain, the brain needs safety and the brain stem needs a sense of safety, which comes really from the, a regulated environment, like I said, which can really include, which should include routines and pictures for children. And then we can, that's a way to redirect and that's a way to discipline. So if you're having behaviors that you don't understand, um, such as aggression or hyperactivity or um, children just not wanting to settle down to learn, always go back to regulating the environment and do I have these routines and pictures for them? Because what they're just telling them what to do is not gonna be enough in these like chaotic times. In the classroom, for example, something that we do a lot is, you know, I might put somebody's desk near, you know, me to help, you know, regulate this student. I might, you know, just, you know, when I see that the student is getting fidgety, I might say, honey, you know, remember that we are, you know, focusing, you know, take a deep breath. We are doing a lot of this, you know, breathing in classroom. However, those skills are not at home, you know, I cannot change my child's student's desk next to me just as a you know quiet reminder, or I cannot change the desk you know so that if the child likes to run out of the classroom because I have some children that have autism, for example, that will run out of the you know out of the library. So I you know I always have to strategically place things within the library to create a better environment that you know is inviting to everybody and is inviting to learning but also make sure that I can keep children, you know, safe and keep an eye on everybody. Cause you know, I have, you know, up to 30 bodies in a, in a classroom. What would you recommend parents to do within the, in, within their home environment? Like how could they, you know, what tips do you give normally when you're counseling that parents could yeah. change the environment? Absolutely Donna. So like we are part of the environment. So when you move a child closer to you, what's actually happening is that they are borrowing our nervous system and they're using the mirror neurons to, a mirror neuron is like, when we see something happening, we start to take it in. And so when our child is, is being anxious and we're able to take a breath, and I talk a lot about parent self-care and it's really the basis of discipline, the child will start to borrow your breathing. So as parents, if a child is getting fidgety, we might just step closer so they can borrow our nervous system. And that's part of regulating the environment. And then giving very clear instructions, you know, as the pictures do with the, these are your next steps, but also with our focus on our words, like um, it's time to sit in your chair and, and look at your teacher while she's teaching you. And then lastly, like sometimes we do need to redirect. And so saying something like, I get it when something is happening that, that you don't like, like a behavior that children want to feel understood. So saying, I get it, show me another way. So if the child is hurting something in the environment or hitting you, sometimes young children hit parents, you can say, take that deep breath and say, I get it. Show me another way. I get it. You're mad. I get it. And so all of those things together is something a parent can do so at I, home. That, that's awesome. I picked up on two things that I do want to pick up on. One is, can we explain what the mirroring of our neurons are? Yeah. It's a very strange concept that not everybody's aware of, and I think that it would be a, a great explanation. And then I would like to go back into how it is that we teach children a new way. So when we say, I get it, show me a different way. I am validating the child's feelings, but have I taught that child a new way? Does yeah. that make sense? Absolutely. So the teaching to talk to that first is in the visuals. So this is how we teach what we expect. And eventually those will be integrated into the child. Um, so take your time with the pictures, you know, put them up regularly consistency and they may take a couple of weeks for them to understand the new expectation because they're all patterns. So if the pattern is I don't listen to you in the morning, we have to change that pattern. And the, the very most important thing we can do is regulate the environment through the routines and pictures and the visuals. Okay. And that all goes into the mirror neurons where, so this was research that was done in Italy on monkeys um, in the last century. And what they found out was that when um, a monkey, they would put like, they put some uh, brain scans, you know, on the monkeys and they could see that 
um, when, a when a monkey was eating a banana, you know, his brain would light up that he was eating a banana. But then they realized that if the monkey was watching someone eat a banana, the same parts of the brain would light up. So watching something happen helps uh, establish those neuro pathways for children. So when we are upset and we take a deep breath and move to por towards problem solving, they start to absorb that from us. And that is such a, an important lesson. I know that a lot of teachers work under a lot of stress, especially now. And we do rely a lot on pictures to convey messages to children. One of the children that actually gets that we use pictures with a real lot in school are children with autism. But I find that they actually work with all children because it does provide a visual. Um, children with autism, if you are fortunate enough to work with a child that has autism, as I am because I see everybody in the library, I normally will have children, these children will have a, you know, all these little pictures and on the back they'll have Velcro. And the Velcro allows the child to move the pictures according to his or her schedule which gives the child a sense of autonomy over his or her own environment, which I think is extremely important and is what we're reaching for in the long run because it teaches children that they do have control over some of their actions. And when I as a person know that I have certain control over something, it gives me certain stability and it actually calms the back you know, stem of the brain. So I think that that idea of yours is just um, amazing. And I'm so glad that you're teaching parents this through, you know, your workshops. Yes, yes, Donna. Like when, when families come to me and, I, and, and their children are exhibiting worrying behaviors like anxiety and stuff, and I say to the parents, this, with these pictures, you can start to see a reduction. And I think half of the behaviors and half of the anxiety goes away at least, you know. And I would also include for children, and this is, I was also in education 10 years ago when, when pictures, you know, were only used in rooms for autism and other special needs. And now we understand that children across the board need them, especially in this stressful time. And so um, include all the way things like include your meal plan, tell children what's for dinner, Monday through Friday, what's coming that will reduce anxiety um, in a really great way. Like who's going to take them to, um, to the park, who's, who's gonna be here, who's gonna be there, what's happening that day, all of those sorts of things. The more details, the better. That is, that is a great thing. Now, if we have the children draw their own pictures, that even gives them a greater sense of autonomy, I think, and a sense of responsibility, and a sense that they can contribute to the family, which is a huge important factor in their own education, it starts teaching, teaching them how to self-regulate. So I love this idea of yours, of the pictures. Um, Molly, I wanna thank you for this. I know that we'll, we will be doing the same video in Spanish. So I thank you very much for coming on and, and joining me on what is passion to both of us, education. And thank you. And I would love to do another one of these videos sometime soon. Is that okay with you? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Donna. Thank you.